In this video, we'll be taking a brief overview of if statements, how they're used, and when you should use certain types. And there are different types of if statements. We're going to be using standard if statements, if else statements, if else if statements, and then the last one, if else if else. So let's dive right in and take a look at standard if statements and with how they work. If statements are an essential tool in any programmer's toolkit. Knowing how to use them and more importantly, understanding how they work is essential to being an efficient and effective programmer. So here we have player term, which is a variable, and we're going to set it equal to one as soon as it's uh, created. This is for a player. Maybe it's a two player game and if player turn equals one, we're going to set player turn equal to two. If player turn equals two, we're going to set player turn equal to one. And then we just have an output message here letting us know what player turn it is. Now, if you're already efficient in uh, if statements, you may know what's going to come out here. If you're new, go ahead and pause the video, predict what you think will be outputted, and then let's talk about why. All right, so we run the program and player turn is one. Well, right here, it says if player turn equals one, player turn equals two. Well, what happens? And this is why it's essential that you understand how if statements work. If player turn equals one, player turn equals two. And player turn gets changed to being two. Then what happens, because these are separate if statements, right after this if statement runs, the next if statement will also run. If player turn equals two, which it did, it got changed in this first if statement, then player turn equals one. And that's why it comes out to one. Well, how in the world are you supposed to program for this so this doesn't happen? Let's talk about that now. To overcome that, you can use if else statements. So for a two player game, if it's not player one's turn, there's only one other option and that it becomes player two's turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna update our code. We're gonna get rid of this because we know this if statement isn't working. And if player turn is one, then we switch to player two. But what if it's player two's turn? How do we switch back to player one? Well, there's only one other case and that's where else comes in. Now you'll see a red line, we'll get rid of that in a minute because it says we're missing the end if. If it's not player one's turn, then we need to switch it back to player one. So player turn equals one. We put our end if and our red lines are gone. Now, here's what happens. Only one of these is going to execute, not both of them. If this is not true, then this line of code will execute. Meaning if it's player's two's turn, when this block of code is run, then it will switch back to player one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this and to prove that it works, we're gonna run, we're gonna set it to player two and make sure it resets to player one. So let's test this code first, make sure it's gonna say that it's player two's turn. Then we'll change player uh, turn to two to make sure it sets back to one. So let's go ahead and run this, take a look. And we see player turn is two. That's what we wanna see. When you're testing your if statements, you have to test for every possible outcome. Sure, it's working the way we want it to right now, but did we code it correctly? And the only way to know that is to actually test. So now we're gonna switch player turn to two, which means this statement is gonna be false. If player turn equals one, it doesn't, which means is it should run this else statement. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it switches back to player one. We run our code and we see player turn is one. So that is how you use if statements and more importantly, how to use if else statements. Let's move into the next section, which is using if else if statements. So we have a section of code here. We're using if else if statements. We have score, which we've dimensionalized as an integer. We have it set to equal 70. Looking at this code, this time we have if, if score is greater than zero, we're gonna output a grade of F. If it's greater than 59, it's gonna be a D. If it's greater than 69, it's gonna say a C. If it's greater than 79, it's a B. If it's greater than 89, it is an A. A lot of people will just start using else if because they wanna combine if statements. 
Uh, else if is not really for combining if statements. We're going to take a look at this, we're going to run it, and see what the actual use is. Because if we're going to use code, we need to understand it, and more importantly, we need to use it correctly. We have to know how it works. So let's pause here, think about what this will output, and then we'll take a look. Let's run our program. Let's take a look and see what happens. So we have grade that is a 70, that is higher than 69. It should output grade C. And when we do, we see that is grade F. Let's talk about why this is happening. A couple of things may go through your mind when you're a beginner programmer or when you're programming, you may be saying, my program's not working correctly. The code is not running the way it should. And it's running exactly like it should because the computer will do what you tell it to do. And understanding your code and how code works will make you such an efficient and you know strong programmer. If statements are the bread and butter of any programmer, they're used in almost any program that you'll see. So we have to understand what is happening here. So we had higher than a 70, but this did not output. Grade C did not output. But shouldn't grade D and grade F also output? So how does the computer know which one to output? Why did it output F instead of C? Why did it output F instead of D? It didn't output A or B. That's good, but let's understand why. When you are using if, else, if statements, one thing is going to happen here. Well, a multitude of things are going to happen here, possibly. The first one is the first if statement is evaluated. And all if statements result in a Boolean value. It's either going to be true or it's going to be false. If it is true, the if statement will execute. If it is false, it will then move to the next line. If when you're using if else if, as soon as the program encounters the first if statement that will result in a true value, it does not check the rest of them. So we look to see is score greater than zero. If score is greater than zero, we're going to output F. If that statement is true, it's going to skip the rest of these. It's going to skip the rest of these and jump right down to the end if statement. This makes checking our if statements very efficient because rather than checking all of them, it's only going to check one. So that's why it outputs an F. Now, how can we rewrite this code? Because we want to see a person's grade. How do we rewrite this code so we'll only output the appropriate grade? Let's pause here, allow you to try to fix it, and then we'll go over the solution. And this is the solution. Using if, else if statements. This is how we would have to program it to get it to work. Because as soon as it encounters the first true statement, it's going to skip over the rest of them. And understanding that is going to allow you to use else if statements correctly. If your code's not working, you need to understand why it's not working and be able to problem solve. So here we go. If score is greater than 89, they had to have made an A. If it's greater than a 79, they made a B. If it's greater than 69, they made a C. Greater than 59, they made a D. And if it's greater than or equal to zero, they made an F. So this should output a C. And we're going to check all of these. So we see a grade of C. So what is happening here? If score is greater than 89, 70 is not greater than 89. The computer checks this, sees that it's false. So it says, okay, we'll go to the next one. Else if score is greater than 79, 70 is not greater than 79. The computer says, okay, let's check the next one. So then it checks the next one. Is 70 greater than 69? Ding, 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 it is. The computer says, okay, what do you want me to do? We say, hey, we want you to output grade of a C. The computer says, okay, skips right over these last two, does not evaluate them, jumps to the end if. So if we had 100 if statements we wanted to run, it's best to use else if because it's only going to evaluate the one that needs to be evaluated. As soon as it evaluates the one that results in a true value, it does not evaluate the rest of them. It's not just about combining if statements together. It's about using efficiency with your if statements. But what you have to remember, because it's more advanced than if statements, is that order does matter. We have the exact same code that we had 
a minute ago. The difference is, is that we have it in a different order. So let's go ahead and let's check 90. That should output an A. Ah, oh, there it is. Grade is an A. All right, let's try 80. And we see that it outputs B. We've already done 70, so let's do 60. That should output a D. Grade D, and then let's output, let's say uh, 25, and we'll need to change that, and it should output an F, and it does, and we can see that our code is working correctly. Now, the last one is using if, else if, else statements. So let's take a look at that. So now we're going to be taking a look at using if, else if, else statements with the last example that we just did. And if you look at my screen, you'll notice there are all kind of red lines. So let's talk about why. So if we have scores greater than 89, then we're going to output an A. We throw in an else. If they enter anything besides what we currently have on the screen, we'll say an invalid score. But then my else ifs aren't working. Why is that the case? When you're using if, else if, else, your else has to go at the bottom of your else if statements. So here I can output invalid score. And this is for like if somebody enters a negative number or like we're here, we're going to use negative 15, which is greater than or which is less than or equal to zero. So we want to let the user know that's an invalid score. But this remember, this is just a brief overview of how to use if if else, if else, if, if else, if else. So you can use else statements with else if. So we've already tested this to make sure that we get the appropriate grade. What we need to do now is test what happens if they don't enter an appropriate grade. And I could get rid of this uh, else. And what it's gonna do is just, as soon as it starts, just gonna say, press any key to continue. There's nothing that's outputted uh, there. And we could leave it like that, but we want to test what happens or what should happen if they enter a grade lower than zero. And we're just going to set ours to negative 15 to let us know that that is an invalid score. And that means if none of these if or else if statements are true, if none of them evaluate to true, then all other cases will always lead to this selection statement, this else statement. If these are not true, then we run the else statement and you can combine else. So now it should say invalid score and we run it and we see invalid scores. So we have tested for every scenario. What you can do is you can uh, expand on these. What you have to remember is when you're using else if statements, I hear so many people tell their students, oh, just use else if. You can combine your if statements together. Sure, you can combine them together and yes, it results in more efficient coding, but the order that you put it in matters. If you combine a bunch of if statements together and it's not giving you the result you want, you need to look at the order. You need to understand what your code is doing because if you're combining if statements together, it's not working the way you want it to, but you don't understand why. Well, you're not getting any more experience as a programmer. You're just going to be, you know, tinkering around and, you know, doing trial and error, trying to figure it out. It's all about understanding your code. That is the most important thing as a programmer is critical thinking and problem solving. Hope you found this video helpful. If you found it helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.